Today what I want to look at is colour. Colour is everywhere. You can find it in the walls, in the floor, in the ceiling, in the sky, in the ground, in the trees, in the buildings. Colour is one of the most important things. It's found everywhere. I want to show you just how important colour theory is, especially when it comes to marketing design, as it is one of the most vital aspects of it in my opinion. So, colour theory, huh? I'm sure we all know or at least have heard about it, right? No? Why are you here then? Whatever. Let's give a basic recap for all those out there who don't. Colour theory is the use of specific colours to evoke certain emotions in each individual. Every single colour has a different effect on the person's psyche. Shall we take some primary colours, for example? The three primary colours of light are red, blue and green. Let's start with red, shall we? I'm sure you know how red supposedly creates feelings of passion, aggression, and urgency. In many cases, this colour is used quite expertly and an excellent colour to start off with. Let's take an example of a very famous fast food company, that being McDonald's, a company which once had a greater GDP than an entire country's. McDonald's main colour scheme is the colour red and yellow. Yellow, acting as an energising colour, working perfectly in tandem with the red. The combination kindles the appetite as well as creating a large sense of urgency, urging you to buy food now, right now, before it's too late, thus appealing to the ape side of your brain. Not only that, but the colours are incredibly bright, very eye-catching and child-friendly. Meaning if the child is interested, you're more likely to get the whole family interested. The colour red is the root cause of all of this, and it's therefore clear to see why the colour red is used so much. And by that I mean in almost every successful fast food company, you'll see this colour being integrated into their logo or their designs in some manner. It's a colour we see almost everywhere despite not appearing much in nature, and that alone should let you in on how important this colour is in marketing design. Let's switch things over to a much cooler colour, that being the colour blue, often cited as an opposite colour for the colour red. I'm sure you can understand the meaning of this colour pretty easily as well. Blue is often used as a calming colour, a soothing colour. It's supposed to invoke a sense of wisdom and safety, as well as security. That's why this colour is used much more than any other colour in general business practices, especially those in charge of transactions of money such as PayPal or American Express. It tells the customer, hey, we're trustworthy and we're safe, we just want to help, trust us. This results in blue being almost overused in my opinion, with this resulting in its effect greatly dampening. Our final primary colour is the colour green, in my opinion a much more underused colour than it deserves. This colour creates a soothing atmosphere, much like blue, but how however this time it is reminiscent of a quiet spring meadow, the point being it almost evokes a sense of nature. It's usually used in a majority of organic food stores or nature based businesses such as gardening tool shops. However this effect used on organic foods can be very effective in other cases, such as when the McDonald's logo, mentioned above, abandoned the red colour in favour of green in some European countries. This was done to show how McDonald's would take preserving natural resources and eco-friendly foods much more seriously. However, it's not just limited to nature-based businesses. It can be used in high effect in many other scenarios, for example Starbucks, or a majority of cafes for that matter. Now how does Starbucks use the colour green effectively? Well first of all, it's, it, the only colour their logo is, is green showing their relationship to green very effectively in my opinion. Let's think about a cafe. People tend to do either one of three things, either A, rush in, rush out, B, come and relax for a short amount of time, or C, stay for a long time and do either some work or some reading or an activity that requires some amount of focus. Now while this effect doesn't really apply to A, the colour green really emphasises an effect for cases B and C, this effect being creating a much a very calming environment while still energizing the user, almost like a breath of fresh air, hence the natural vibe. This is an opportunity most people do not get much in this stressful society, so it becomes imperative to the mental well-being of people. The use of mostly wooden infrastructure in Starbucks tends to add to this concept of nature as well, alongside the coffee itself just being energizing. This combination of the color green, the wooden infrastructure, and the nature of the coffee shop results in this color being used to great effect in my opinion. 
So far, I've only ever given you examples of colours being used effectively. However, of course, there are seemingly examples that go against this rule, surely. Interestingly enough, the colour green has a perfect example for this. An incredible counter-argument, that being the case of BP. An extremely successful multinational oil company, and an extremely well-known. It uses a combination between green and yellow in the form of a shape similar to a glowing sun or a growing flower. Now the use of yellow in this case is obvious as it is an energizing color and the company effectively sells energy. However, the green is an interesting choice. As stated previously, it manifests a sense of nature and organic materials, which seemingly will go against an oil company, therefore in theory causing the company to lose money. However, in practice, BP is thought of as one of the most seven super majors of the oil company world and the fifth largest energy company by market capitalization in 2007. This would seemingly go against basic color theory and imply that colors don't matter at all in success. Now while this case may seemingly show this, I could not disagree with this more. The interpretation of nature in that case could easily imply that the use of energy is more ethical and organic than it truly is and thus result in more success. And by this I mean linking the products of nature will, forget, will make one forget about the unethical ways that oil is obtained and the damage it is doing to the environment. Color theory is important. However, I can't just keep spouting off random effects of colors without backing up the effects of them. But unfortunately for you, I've got facts to back me up. That's right, facts. All right, let's start with some anecdotal evidence. Recently, my sister, my brother and I had the opportunity to purchase a new iPhone SE 2020. Now, we were all going to get the exact same phone with the exact same specs. The only difference we get to choose was a different color that the case was going to be. Seeing what this video is, I'm sure you know where they're going. Uh, we each chose a completely different color out of the three options, red, black, and white. A three-way split, all for different reasons. We each had our own personal reasons for choosing them, ranging from, oh, it's just, I just like it, to it's more professional, to it's more different of course it's not just anecdotal evidence i also have statistics no here you can see a pie chart for the number of iphone 5c sales based off of color as well as the pre-orders for the iphone success based on color if colors have no importance there would these results would not be as skewed as they are in this in these graphs especially with the 5c where one color has 46 percent of the sales and another has one percent of the sales Remove one of those colors, and you will lose almost no money. Now, some may say that this now some may say that this effect and these skewed results are purely because of aesthetical choices. It's not the color drawing you in; it's the phone. Now, while this may be true in some respects, that it still does not disprove the fact that color can be incredibly important and can greatly affect the human mind. There was a test performed upon a website where one has to click a button to sign up for some sort of program. At first it was green, blending in with the rest of the website's colour scheme. However, the website owners decided to change to red, and almost immediately saw that there was a 21% increase in the button being clicked, which can be extremely important no matter what size business you are. 20% is a huge leap just from a different colour. There are countless studying proving results to a similar degree, where changing one specific colour in a certain event will result in much more positive feedback. For example, red placebo pills being more effective than blue placebo pills, or black tests resulting in better grades than red tests. I will link several similar experiments done down below, as if I keep going on, I could go, I would take up the whole video and go on and on and on. Instead, I'm going to talk about how there have been a variety of studies showing that humans often find the same emotions from colors. Well, now while this may not seem relevant at first, it is extremely relevant, because if humans who have never interacted with each other before find the same emotions from the same colors that means that color theory must be real and more than that important it's easy to understand where we get these emotions for colors from red is equal to a dangerous anger color which comes from the places we see red in nature that being fire and blood objects or phenomenon which are dangerous to us or require us to get angry. To oppose that you have the color blue which evokes a sense of safety and wisdom 
which can be seen from in nature from the ever constant sky and the calm tranquil seas. These effects from the colours are ingrained into our minds because of this, and we can see this in a multitude of studies, such as one where they found out different concrete colour meanings in America versus India, and they ended up having extremely similar results for each colour. The biggest difference is being seen in abstract colours, such as black and white, where it was usually down to religious issues. The most famous example of this being the fact that white in Western culture is seen as a symbol of peace and purity, whereas in Eastern culture it is seen as a symbol of mourning. This knowledge of the effects of colour have gone but has been around for years, thousands of years in fact, with incredibly important forms of the usage of colour being, for example, chromotherapy, also known as colorology or light therapy, a form of treatment. Chromotherapy was a form of treatment used by the ancient Egyptians and the Chinese, and the way it worked is it used a variety of colours to stimulate the brain for recovery. For example, using shades of orange to soothe the lungs, or using shades of indigo to alleviate skin issues, etc. etc. What's amazing about this is that it sees used still to this day as a form of alternative medicine, giving some credit to the idea that colour can influence the brain more than just emotionally, but also physically. Now, when so many studies have been done proving the effects of colour on the human mind, people have wondered, how does it affect the human mind? There have been numerous studies on this, but surprisingly little, considering how much of a prevalence colour has in our society. One of the best examples I could find was demonstrated in 1976, where a man named Richard Colour... Look, okay, the irony is not lost on me, but that is genuinely his name. K-U-L-L-E-R. Colour. Anyway. Richard Colour quickly and easily demonstrated how colour and visual patterning can affect not only the cortex, but the entire central nervous system. He found that differences in colour showed a variety of alpha brainwave activity, which is used in medical sciences to measure human alertness. He also found that when colour is transmitted through the human eye, the brain releases certain hormones, which affects our moods, mental clarity, and energy levels. Richard Colour swiftly and clearly presented how colour can affect human beings to a great extent, affecting their minds and mental well-being. Sorry for taking so long proving that colour is an effect on the brain. I just wanted to make clear how colour does have an effect on the brain, showing scientific studies to show that it first of all does by looking at percentages and statistics, second of all affects people similarly around the world and throughout history, and third of all has a scientific basis where it makes sense for the brain to perceive colours and understand those emotions that way. Now that we understand that colour can have an important effect on the brain, let me explain why it is the most important effect on the brain when it comes to marketing design. There is a little known fact that most people make their impression of someone based on their face not only one second into meeting them, not only half a second into meeting them, but one tenth of a second into meeting them. That's right, completely based off appearances in a tenth of a second. That similar fact is also true for websites, with a study showing that people make their impressions off a website only 500 milliseconds after witnessing it. Now, this is a fun fact, but alone, it implies nothing about colour theory. However, with, with the studies we've done before in mind, as well as an isolation effect, this changes drastically. Now, the isolation effect is quite simple, really. Something that sticks out is more memorable. And this is a pretty common concept and very easily provable, simply by doing this. Now, out of these shapes on the screen, I'm certain that you probably looked at the red shape most of all, mostly because it sticks out. Now, each individual shape here has a different form, but only one of them has a different colour, and yet it's the one with the different colour that your eyes are drawn to immediately. This alone shows how important colour is in making imp good impressions, which is vital in marketing design. This, combined with the effect colour as you're on your brain, can clearly show how if you're on a website or you're looking at a logo or anything of the sorts, the first thing you will be influenced by is the colour and it will influence your whole impression of the website immediately in 500 milliseconds. And if you've got a better unique colour scheme, it will make your website even more unique, thus making it more memorable. Memorability is an incredibly important thing when it comes to marketing design and with the effect colours have, you can create a brand that's much more memorable and thus will make much more profit. 
For example, I could show these three lines and give you a vague description of what the product is, and you, you most likely would be able to figure out what the logo is and the business behind it, due to the, due to the recognizability of those colors. Let's use one final example to show how colors can be used in a way that is almost unexpected. This whole time, I've been talking about color theory and which colors evoke what emotion. However, you can use the absence of color, or rather the absence of, in of commonly used colors, very effectively also. For example, here is this website that uses a very less commonly used shade of yellow to emphasize its less conventional methods of real estate which is its purpose as a website. Alongside this, its supplementary use of white and black retain the effects of a professional, trustworthy website. And this use of color allows the website to be received extremely positively in the 500 milliseconds it takes to judge it, allowing for much more profit to be gained by the company simply through using a very specific shade of yellow that isn't commonly used, thus proving how color theory can be incredibly effective, whether used correctly or used incorrectly. Now with that all said and done, it's clear how color theory can have an immense effect on the person's mindset, especially when it comes to the aesthetics of a product, the websites, and the logos of a business. However, even still, there are times where this just isn't important enough. For example, take cars. While white is a very popular finish due to how calming as well as professional it is, in really hot countries, getting the color white would be much better and much more successful in keeping you cool making the idea of color theory being effectively meaningless in the face of genuine practical issues, and this is where color theory fails. When a product needs its color to be designed for a very specific purpose, as I just mentioned heat, or for example if there are mon monetary issues with different specific shades of color, like specific phone colors, or again car finishes, and again cultural differences. Imagine buying something white for someone in America, as stated earlier, being representative of innocence or purity, if you remember all the way in America versus India, versus somewhere in an Eastern culture where white is a symbol of mourning, that would be dreadful. Then the idea of color theory is, gets thrown out the window. It becomes meaningless, and at that point, what was the point of this entire video if there are scenarios like this where it is meaningless? The answer to that is actually pretty simple, and that's because these arguments are flawed in a manner. While there are genuine issues, if you have a practical issue with colour, it's not actually that common. Designing for heat is a, probably one of the worst examples I could have picked. The idea of colour theory can be applied to different cultures. Let's say you're advertising strictly for an Indian audience. You can use the, you can use the effects colours had for Indian culture, especially for that. Let's say you're advertising specifically for American culture, you could do the vice versa. In fact, a majority of cultures, as stated previously, have similar color-based effects. So just stick with the concrete colors, and if, if you do that, you'll be able to quickly and easily make effects. That's a majority of the reason why companies are easily successful all over the world, like McDonald's. It uses concrete, kid-friendly, child-friendly colors, which are easily understandable by everywhere it goes, and where it needs to be changed for cultural influence, it does that. For example, in India, where a majority of its burgers are either vegan or use chicken because they can't eat beef. With that being said, it is clear to see the power color has, especially when it comes to objects like websites or logos, where it is one of the most essential parts of it, especially since people are making judgments on their website or logo in under the first second of seeing it. And as, as proven earlier, color is one of the most obvious effects, and it can influence the brain in ways nothing else can. And that's why I believe color theory is one of the most important aspects of marketing design. I truly, honestly believe that with all my heart, that color theory, while may not being the most important due to how there are times where color theory needs to be thrown out the window as shown before, it is 100% one of the most important aspects of marketing design.